a song. So we always, because it has been uh, accepted during our time that Joy to the World is a Christmas song. But if we look at the lyrics, it's actually a song about the kingdom of God uh, in the future. It's, of course, not yet happening now. Uh, that will be in the future. If you notice the last verse, He rules the world with truth and grace. And it's definitely not the case today. And God is not, uh, His kingdom is not yet established. So, uh, joy, the song Joy to the World is about the kingdom of God and uh, not uh, a Christmas song. So yung mga nakapag-practice na may joy to the world, eh, tanggalin yan. Hindi, totoo naman. Itignan nyo yung lyrics. Ako, tama po yan. And, uh, and also, uh, <laughs> no, that's not my purpose. Uh, my purpose is to proclaim the truth. Uh, and also to... Uh, <laughs> To remind you this morning that uh, those who have applied for the choir, I haven't, you're not uh, all accepted yet. I will wait after the Christmas party. Okay, so, ano lang po, uh, hindi ko naman po sinasabotahe yung, ano, or whatever. Pero yung mga married men, siguro accepted kayo sa mga gagawin nyo, okay lang po. So, yung iba po, uh, tignan natin ang buti. Okay, nagchat-chat si Jalil, tigil ako na daw. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> let's all uh, stand and let's read our text this morning. Uh, Nehemiah 8, 13 to 18. Uh, last meeting, pastor asked me when I'm going to be done with Nehemiah. Actually, I also don't know. So, uh, uh, and uh, let's just see. Uh, 13 to 18. Let's read uh, verses 13 to 18. Let's read this uh, all together. Ready? Read. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. They found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses, the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month, and they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees, to make booths as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them, and made themselves booths upon the roof of his house and their courts in the courts of the house of God and the street of the water gate and in the street of the gate of Ephraim and all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths for since the day of Joshua the son of Nun unto that day they had not the children of Israel done so and there was very great gladness. Also day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. And as we uh, wrap up chapter 8 of uh, Nehemiah, I pray, Lord, that you uh, help us understand um, uh, these verses and uh, the application of the Word of God by these people and that we may also understand uh, how and, and uh, how to apply the Word of God in our lives and also how to uh, get the m uh, more blessings out of the Bible reading. And, and, and for those uh, of us this morning who will be uh, realizing more the things that uh, 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 we have to add to our lives, I pray that we'll be humble enough to do that. I pray that you forgive us of our sins and make us worthy, dear Lord, uh, of this, uh, this time of studying your word. Help me and, uh, uh, as I preach and as I teach these uh, verses. I myself am not uh, worthy to do this. I don't have the ability, dear Lord, but uh, with the Holy Spirit's guidance and uh, help, we'll be able to get blessings out of these verses. May we be able to glorify you in this time of study. For of these things I pray in His name. Amen. So um, we have been studying the Word of God for the past few weeks. And uh, this is uh, simply entitled uh, The Word of God uh, Part 4, I think. This is the fourth uh, time. And uh, here in chapter 8, I really wanted to take my time to go th to the verses and uh, go to verses in other places in the Bible to help us uh, appreciate the Word of God more. And uh, actually, uh, this Nehemiah should be longer, but since I have only a week apart 
from preparing and preaching uh, another message, not able to go uh, deeper into a lot of things. Actually, I was already asking Preacher Mon yesterday to sub for me this morning because I know that there are uh, some things that I need to add to this, but uh, I, by the grace of God, we can uh, see these things uh, as we go through the verses. And we have been studying the importance of God's Word. Last week, we learned uh, that our response to the Word of God should eventually be obedience. And this is exactly what they did. Uh, starting from verse 13 until we end here, chap chapter 8, it's about them figuring out, knowing uh, what the will of God is, what God commanded them to do, and obeying whatever it is they found out in the Word of God. So for, they read the Word of God every day, they found something out, immediately they obey. They see something, immediately they obey. And we read in the verses uh, a while ago that this is something new to them because since the day of Joshua, no one has been obeying the Word of God. No one has been doing this feast. No one may be only a few, a handful of people were actually reading the Word of God and knows these things. And those handful of people, they may not be proclaiming it to other people. So this is something that's very new to them. That's why they did it with excitement. They did it immediately uh, uh, the moment they learned about it. But let's go to verse 13 first. And I want to emphasize something here. It says here, And on the second day, <clears throat> they were gathered together, who? The chief of the fathers of all the people, the priest and the Levites and to Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. Now, there are, these are people who are leaders. These are people who are the men, the men of, the, uh, of Israel and people who, were actually, who actually have people under their control. So they are fathers, they are scribes, they are priests. All of these people, they're gathered together apart from the uh, congregational reading and studying and, and uh, explaining the Word of God. They have their own separate gathering. What is their purpose for that? For them to understand the words of the law. So they want to understand more the words of the law. And while all of us need Bible study, men and women alike, all of us need to have uh, to be <clears throat> to be deep in studying the Word of God. It is actually uh, required more of the men of the church to be deeper in the Word of God. And it's actually required more to the fathers of families to be the deepest person in the Word of God in your family. And it's actually required for the men of this church that the men be deeper in the Word of God rather than the women. And this is nothing about, against the women. It's actually good to have women in the church who are uh, diligently studying the Word of God. Why? It gives more challenge or the, uh, uh, they call this motivation for men to study even more. Nakakahiya po pag sa simbahan, mas malalim ang mga babae kaysa sa lalaki sa saltan ng Panginoon. And, and, and you see these people here, they know their responsibility, they know that God has given, has placed them in the, in the uh, leadership position, and they will never effectually lead people, their families, or the, or the nation of Israel, unless they understand the Word of God. And, 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 and a proper leader, a good leader, understands the Word of God and will lead people according to the Word of God. Hindi lang po personal nating philosophy ang ating binibigay pag tayo ginawang leader. When you're a leader of a family, it's not your personal desire, your personal philosophy, kung ano yung pa, uh, pakasabihan mo sa buhay ang ibibigay mo sa iyong family. What you are supposed to give to your family or even to the church are the things that the Lord has taught you. Na nanggagaling po sa saltan ng Panginoon. And that is the only way that we can really lead uh, uh, properly. That's the only way that we can lead our families closer to the Lord. That's the only way we can lead the church closer to the Lord. If it's, it is if the men in the church are going to be studying the Word of God even more. We, sh we should be the ones who are getting together and studying the Word of God. And that's why it's always good and it's always uh, a blessing to the church if men of the church will come together and not talk about basketball, not talk about food, not talk about anything else, but only the Word of God. When was the last time we did that? Diba? Means, uh, because sometimes when men are gathered together, it is uh, uh, parabang word of God na lang yung pinakahuling na pag-uusapan. But then, uh, the, 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 the most benefit we can give to the church is if we come together and really study the word of God together, be deeper in the word of God, and lead the women of the church into deeper understanding of the word of God as well, while they also do their personal study. The, the challenge here is, tayo mga lalaki ang dapat mas nagpapakalalim sa salta ng Panginoon. Nakakahiya kung asawa kang lalaki, mas malalim ang asawa mong babae sa'yo. 
That is something that is uh, that is not the design of God. The design of God is yung mga lala, the, the men of the church are the ones who really know the word of God. Why? Because we're the ones who are leading our families and leading the church. It is some, it's actually a shame if the members know uh, are, are so much deeper than the preachers here in the church. The preachers are the ones who are supposed to be expounding on the word of God, explaining the word of God. And if what we're preaching, uh, people already know and they know even deeper than us, well, praise the Lord for them, but them, that is something uh, against us. That is something that, that means that we, we lack studying the word of God. That's why we are the ones who have to be doing that. Why? To be able to understand the words of the law and then to be able to lead the people closer to God. And it is a mandate that is given to us by God. Kaya nga po mga lalaki, ang ating priority is the Word of God. Studying the Word of God. And without, without that, we can be smart. We can know all the uh, uh, principles of uh, raising a, f- a good family. We can know all the principles of how to save money. But then if we're not deep in the Word of God, all of these things do not matter at all. We can know principles, papaano kang mag-ipon. Tinuruan tayo ni Ate Rams dyan nung Friday. Diba? Uh, kung papaanong, uh, papaanong uh, magdisiplina ng bat uh, uh, to discipline our children. But then if we just do this out of our own might or out of worldly uh, wisdom that we get out of the internet or wherever, then this is something that is not according to the Word of God. We are just going to lead our families astray. And this is given to us, men in the church. And this is a challenge for us to be deeper in study. That's why if, if, our, if uh, in the house... It's good that the children see that the, the fathers read the Bible more. That the fathers are praying more. That the fathers are deeper in the Word of God. It's, that they, that it's, not, it's not that the husband is the one asking the wife, Oh, what, is this, what does this verse mean? Papa, ano ba to? And it does, sometimes, I don't know, uh, I, I, I don't know about uh, others, but I think there's uh, some uh, pastors or the wives are making the outline. And the pastors will just read it. Uh, behind the pulpit. We should not do that. Our children should see that the men are the ones leading the Bible study. The men are the ones leading the people in prayer. And this, because this is the design of God. It's not the other way around. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4.12, Let no man despise the youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. This verse is given to Timothy. Timothy was supposed to be the leader of the church and the man of the church, the leader of the church. This is a charge to us, not only to be deep in the word of God, but also to be the examples in the church. The examples in our family, not only to know the word of God, but if we're not going to lead by example, we are not going to be effective leaders as well. The Bible says here, we should be examples in what they say, in word, in what they do. Okay? Show them what to do in love, in spirit, or, or in, the, in our attitude towards things. Uh, or, or do people see us with a good attitude? If something bad happens, how do we react? If we show that to, to, to other people that we, we react badly in the things that are happening, then we're not really teaching them something good. If we show our children that we react, react badly in the things of this life, then that is not really uh, leading by a good example. In faith, in faithfulness as well. We should be examples in that. When, when there is a, ch- uh, a gathering, it should be the men of the church who are saying, hey, uh, 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 we should be on time in the church. You, you should uh, wake up early, okay? uh, prepare yourself, pray for the preaching, pray for the service, and you should be the one showing them excitement in coming to church. Hindi po yung lalaki pa yung hinihila para lang mag- magsimba. You should be the men who are doing this in example. Not only in faith, in faithfulness as well, but in purity as well. We should show them how to live the Christian life, not only knowing what to do, but actually doing what we know according to the Word of God. Kaya nga po, this is a challenge to the men. And the people here in, in, the, in Nehemiah chapter 8, after they read the Word of God, they actually, uh, as a congregation, uh, explain the Word of God. But then, uh, privately, the men, the leaders, went together to even understand the Word of God more. Para lalo pa silang uh, uh, maging effective in their leading the family and, and, and the nation of Israel. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 says, And the things that how thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Kaya nga po tayo mga lalaki, nagtuturoan din tayo dapat. For example, we gather together and God has, uh, has given me something this week through my Bible reading. I should be uh, sharing this to other men. 
So they'll be deeper. And if they know uh, things that they, God has shown them in the Bible, they should be sharing it, it to us as well. Why? So that together we are going to uh, do this, teaching the younger man and teaching the up and coming, coming leaders of the church in order for this to, the, the truth to perpetuate. Para po magpatuloy na magpatuloy. And this is something that has been given to us. And I know that this is something that we lack doing. When we're together, we talk about many things, right? NBA, and mostly basketball, and, if, and it depends on the crowd. Sometimes it's Mobile Legends, sometimes it's all about all of these things. But the thing that we have to be talking about more is the Word of God. And sometimes it sounds corny. Para bang mapadaan ka sa isang grupo nag-uusap Word of God, eh, corny naman ang mga to. Tapos ng service, pagbaba, Word of God pinag-uusapan. Preaching na nga, pagbaba, Bible pa rin, pare-pares naman natin rinig yung preaching ng pag-uusapan. But, but this is, this is should, something that we should be always be talking about. Kaya nga po, pag nag-gather mga lalaki, dapat laging pinag-uusapan. Salta ng Panginoon. And, and, uh, kaya nga, and this is something that we do. Nabanggit na yan ni Kuya Gomes. Tapos namin maglaro, anong pinag-uusapan namin? Word of God. Diba? Pag, pagod na kami, upo na kami dyan. Habang naghihintay, nag-uusap kami ng salta ng Panginoon, ng ministry. Kaya nga po, yung basketball namin, it's very profitable for us. Kasi pagod na kami physically, nakapag-basketball na, spiritual na po yung pinag-uusapan namin. Diyan sa baba, habang nagkakape, mag-aapan ng kape si Kuya Gomer. And this is, uh, I'm serious, it's true. Most of the time. No po? Pero, I know, we are very much guilty of this. You know, when we're together, ang gusto namin, gusto natin magtawanan, share jokes, stories, and all of these things. All of these things are good kasi yung fellowship natin is being strengthened, but we have to strengthen each other using the Word of God as well. This is a mandate to us men to, to be the leaders of the church, not only be the ones who are deeper in the Word of God, but showing this as an example as well. Pagdating naman po sa pamilya, tayo din dapat ang nagli-lead sa ating mga family and to be examples with our families. The Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 7, the just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. And if you're not going to be a good example as a father, don't expect to raise godly children. Okay? The, the Bible says his children are blessed after him. Now, they're blessed both temporal and in, in, in eternal blessings as well. Dahil pag ang, ang tatay ay, uh, ay malapit sa Panginoon, of course, there will be temporal blessings here on earth because they're going to know how to live their lives properly. But then, they're going to be raised into good works. That's why there are eternal blessings as well. Kaya nga po, as fathers, we should be able to show by example and also be able to train our children and to discipline them according to the Bible. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 24, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Kaya nga po bilang mga tatay, not only do we have to know the Word of God, to be an example, but to be able to discipline our children. To be able to help them grow up fearing the Lord. To grow up respecting authority. So in that way, they will know, uh, uh, their, their hearts will be prepared to accept the Lord someday when, someday when, they, are, uh, when they are in that uh, age of accountability. The, the word here, betimes, means in the morning. Doesn't mean that every morning papaluin natin sila. It simply means that while the vicious uh, uh, habits haven't formed yet, habang maaga pa, dun sila pinapalo. Hindi po sila pinapalo yung ayanat, salbahin na, chakaman ng pagpapalo-paluin. Eh, sometimes it's too late. Magkakaroon lang sila ng rebellious spirit. But the time that we have to chasten them and to not withhold the rod of correction is before they even form these bad habits. And we know that children have bad habits. And even though my uh, daughter is just uh, uh, barely nine months, uh, I, I also live with a very uh, kind uh, boy named Chut Chut. But we see that, but I see in him that he has uh, habits as well. He has formed habits in his life that are very hard to break. Why? Because it's already formed in him. And even though you, 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 you chasten him or you spank him many times, it, oh, it will not really result into good things. Why? Because uh, uh, it has to be done in the morning. Okay? Not, uh, that means early in life. Habago pa nila ma-form ito. We should not do that. The Bible says in Proverbs 19, 18, Chasten thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. Wag kang maawa, sabi ng Bible. Let not foolish pity get in the way of training our children. Why? Because the Bible already told us how to do this. And if we really are studying the Bible, really are studying the Word of God, alam natin ang gagawin natin. Of course, pag pinalo mo, iiyak. Pag naawa ka, titigil ka. Pwede wala din nangyari. 
Yeah, parang si JL ngayon, alam na niya ngayon paano siyang pag pinapagalitan. No! Ganun yung siya, tas, ganun yung tiyo, tas, ah, okay na, okay na. Diba? Ay, ibig pa rin pag anak mo eh. Hindi, mali, pa, nine months pa lang naman. Magbabago rin ako. Ah, pag, pag ano, the, the Bible says, Chasten your thy son while there is hope. Son, oh, hindi, pati daughter. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. Hindi pag umiiyak na, maawa ka na, titigil na. Why? Because we are, the reason why we are doing this is for their own good as well. And then, and, and, I have read this book about uh, 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 disciplining children and he made a great point. If you raise children who do not respect authority, may hirapan silang maligtas pag, pag laki nila. But if you raise children respecting authority, knowing na may authority sa akin ng my parents have authority over me, pastor has authority over me, older people has authority over me, they, it is preparing their hearts to eventually uh, 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 recognize a higher authority which is God. Kaya nga po, we have to do that. And, and no matter how hard it is, when your children are crying, yesterday we were in the outreach and, uh, um, uh, and JL had a minor in, uh, incident. She had her forehead because it's big, you know, it hit the wall. And uh, it, uh, Sister Vicky sent us a picture of that. And j we're in the outreach and we haven't even started. Jalil already wants to go home. And because, you know, uh, children crying is, uh, uh, has a different effect pag ikaw ang magulang. But then, it should not get in the way because that's emotion. So as, as, as fathers, we need to be deep in the Word of God. Know, according to the Word of God, how to discipline our children. Okay, hindi lang... Mamalo basta, for the sake of basta ka mamamalo. Eh, dapat, ito si Andre, samahan ang tingin sa akin. Dapat, minsan, hindi mo rin, hindi mo rin ibibigay ko basta kung anong gusto nila. Okay, ba't tayo napunta dyan? But then, again, I'm talking to the fathers, the leaders of the church, and not only to the fathers, even the single men of the church. It is your duty to be deep in the Word of God as well. And no matter how busy you are, you might be busy searching for your partner, you might be busy uh, doing a lot of things that gusto mong gawin because you're still young, but you should not forget that one, that your responsibility is to, deep in, to be deep in the Word of God. And that actually prepares you for the marriage, mar uh, married life. Okay, that is why you should be the leaders in this church pagdating sa, uh, uh, sa salita ng Panginoon. Going to verse number 14, and they found written in the in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in feast of the seventh month. Now, we'll go to the feast later, but here in verse 14, there's a very simple truth we can find here. They come together for the purpose of understanding the Word of God and they found. Okay? There's no finding the will of God apart from studying the Word of God. You can only find the will of God if you study the Word of God. And you will certainly find the will of God if you study the Word of God. That is the promise of God. Because if God will not help us find His will when we are obeying Him in studying the, the Word of God, then He's not really a good God at all. But then if we are really diligently studying the Word of God, slowly He will reveal to us His will. Kaya nga po, kung hindi tayo nag, sasal, nagbabasa ng Bible, hindi tayo nag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon, don't expect to know the will of God in your life. Because it doesn't work like magic. Uh, now that I am saved, now that I have the Holy Spirit, I don't have to read, I don't have to pray, but I will magically make all the right decisions in life. It doesn't work that way. You make the right decisions in life by knowing the Word of God, by having a prayer life, by having a good walk, daily walk with God, and, and, and being submissive to the Holy Spirit. That's how you make good decisions in your life. It's not magic. Kaya nga po, you find the will of God, you read the Word of God, you study the Word of God, and then you will find. And then you will know the will of God. And then you will learn. That is, that is how it should work. And as a believer, we should know the will of God. We should know the will of God in our lives. There is no excuse for us not to know the will of God because we have the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says those people, believers who do not know the will of God, are foolish. People who are foolish. Ephesians 5, 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Not knowing the will of God is unwise simply because we have all the tools to know the word of God, uh, to know the will of God. Nasa atin na lahat ng tools. We have the Bible, we have prayer, we have preaching. There's no excuse not to know the will of God at all. Kaya kung isa ka mananampalataya hanggang ngayon, hindi mo pa alam ang kalooban ng, ng, sa buhay mo, kasalanan mo na yun. It's not the fault of the preachers, it's not the fault of the pastor, it's 
not the fault of the Bible or it's definitely not the fault of God. If you don't know the will of God, it's simply because you're lazy to, know, to find out the will of God. If you don't know the will of God in your life, simply because you're not dilig a diligent student of the Word of God. And it's easy to know the will of God if we are really uh, submissive to the Word of God. Of course, not every will of God is revealed specifically in the Bible. And this is of, uh, what we have been studying uh, this morning as well in our uh, 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 Bible class. Not all the will of God is revealed specifically in the Bible. The job that you're going to take, it's not there. You're not going to read, okay, you should work at Florida International School. If you read that, throw your Bible and run away. Right? But then you're not going to read the name of the person you're going to marry in the Bible, except if it's a biblical name. But then, having these principles in the Word of God, diligently studying the Word of God, the Lord will be the one to lead us towards His will. It's unwise for us not to know the will of God. Why? Simply because we, all ha we have all the tools to know the will of God. The Bible and prayer. Going to verse 15, it says here, And that they should pub publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches. Now, they saw the instruction, what they have to do, how to hold this feast. To fetch the olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make boots as it is written. Verse 16, so the people went forth. Okay, now they figured out what they have to do. Immediately, they obeyed. They went forth and brought them and made themselves booths. Everyone upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and the streets of the water gate and in the streets of the gate of Ephraim and all the congregations of them that were come again out of the captivity made boots and sat under the boots. For since the days of Jeshua the son of Nun unto that day had not ch the children of Israel done so, and there was very great gladness. So now they were being instructed on what to do. They seek the word of God, they found out what to do, uh, they're actually given the specific instructions of what to do, and they immediately know about this, uh, and they immediately uh, uh, obeyed this. Now, this is talking about the Feast of the Tabernacles. And the Feast of the Tabernacles. And, and, and they found out that they have to observe this at that very time. And that is actually exactly what they needed sa panahon na yon, to have this great revival and to know the Lord again. Here in Leviticus 23, 39-43, we see uh, what was written. This is exactly what they have read. Also in the 15th day of the 7th month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the Lamb, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. This is the feast that they were talking about. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it as a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. And it shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. This is the feast of the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in boot seven days. And all that are Israelites born shall dwell in boots. Okay. This is the instruction. This is exactly what they did. And the young reason, what's the reason for this? In verse 43, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now for seven days, they have to live in huts made from branches. Now, they have to go out of their house and live somewhere else in, for seven days. Now this was for them to remember the wanderings after they left Egypt and their wanderings in the wilderness in disobedience for 40 years, and how they live in tents and tabernacles. Just to remind them, these boots reminded them both of the victory of God's salvation out of Egypt and God's deliverance when they left Egypt, and also the sting of disobedience when they wandered in the wilderness. Now, it is good, it's good for us to remember our failures as well. It's good to us to remember our sin and the consequences we experience from that sin. Now, uh, I, because the reason is when you got saved and when you decide to follow the Lord, the sins that you fall for before are most likely the sins that you're going to commit again. Why? Because they are what works for you. Nakita na ng kaaway na iyon ang kahinaan mo and even though uh, until now, yun pa rin ang ino-offer sa'yo ng kaaway. Why? Because it works for you. 
That's the reason why it's good to remember those things. Alalahanin. Although we have to move on from them, but you should not forget them. Remember what I did. Remember what happened when I did this. Remember what were the consequences. And this will help us avoid to do them again. Okay, uh, when, 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 when the devil offers this to us again. And the Lord, though the Lord has given us power over these things, it's a good thing to remember them. And, and this feast, and almost all the feasts that God has given to Israel are a way for them to remember God's goodness on also the things that they have experienced before. Now, they are to live in huts made of branches simply to, re for the, to remind them that when you were supposed to just travel for 11 days, you went around for 40 years in disobedience, and because of that, you were dwelling in tents, you were cold, you were dwelling in all these things, and a lot of bad things happened. You have to remember that. God made them remember that. And this thing also remember, uh, made them remember that they were merely pilgrims and strangers in the land that was given to them by God. All the feasts, all, all the things that were given to Israel were because of what God has done for them. Kahit po yung mga first fruits and all of these things, they're doing this simply to remember the goodness of God. And it's also one good thing for us to remember the goodness of God. Uh, Deuteronomy 6.12 says, Then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. These verses show me that this Israelite people are very forgetful people. And sometimes we, we also are forgetful people. We live a life that lacks thanksgiving to God simply because we forgot the goodness of God in our lives. Now, it's a good thing to remember what God has done to us. Alalahanin natin ano yung mga kabutihan ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. And think, where are we now if not for the goodness of God? And to remember those things. And we are going to live a life of thanksgiving and glory to God if we keep on remembering the goodness of God in our lives. Without God, we won't even be here. We won't even be experiencing the blessings that we are experiencing. You know, uh, the th uh, we, we, we have a job that is uh, stable. We have, a, we have a good salary, okay? Especially uh, uh, some of us, uh, some of you. You have good salaries, right? And, and uh, uh, God is blessing you. You're away from, uh, from, from places that are dangerous. We're in a peaceful place. We can enjoy our lives. We have a church. We can go to outreaches. We serve the Lord. Uh, we, we study the Word of God. Uh, we get deeper into the Word of God. All of things is because of the goodness of God. And imagine many people do not have these blessings that we have. And then we still have the audacity to complain instead of thank God. Right? Kaya nga po minsan, mas nakak nakakalungkot po kung marami pa tayong reklamo sa dami na ng blessing ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. And, 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 and it's a good principle for us to apply as well. Not to hold the feast because this feast, they get drunk and we should not do that. But then, just to always remember the goodness and kindness of God. What God has done in your life. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Why? Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. No matter how vile a sinner you were, no matter what you did in the past, God has been faithful and just to forgive you today and to count you faithful to do what you're doing. For those who are standing behind this pulpit, I don't know if any one of us can say, I'm worthy to preach the Word of God. But God has given us this, uh, despite what we have done against Him, despite our sins, despite our weaknesses, despite our shortcomings, God is using us in the ministry. And that is the goodness of God. Why? He has forgiven us. Remember that. Do not forget that. The moment we forget that, we take our ministry for granted. The moment we forget that, we take what we're doing for the Lord for granted. Para bang tayo na ang nagpipreach? Doon, doon papasok ang kayabangan. Doon papasok ang pride. Doon papasok ang sarili mo. Pag nakalimutan, know that it is only God's blessing in your life. That's why we have to remember, Nahum 1.7, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and He knoweth that the trust in Him. How many times have the Lord been good in your life? The Lord is good all the time. And all the time, He is in control of what's happening in your life. Remember that. Whatever happens is because the Lord is good in your life. Kaya nga po, the reason why we're living uh, a life na wala tayong thanksgiving sa Panginoon because we have forgotten. We take things for granted. Nasanay na tayo sa sitwasyon natin and we stop thanking the Lord for it. We stop thanking the Lord for that. When we pray, do we still thank the Lord for the little blessings that He has given us every day? Do you still thank the Lord that we have families with us serving them in the ministry? Do we still thank the Lord? Do we still remember those things? Do we still appreciate the Lord for that? Now, the Israelites are stiff-necked people. They're hard-headed people. We read it a while ago that since the day of Joshua, they have not obeyed the Word of God. But then God, uh, para to, uh, to give a solution to all of this, God reminds them. 
Remember, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. The moment I brought you out of that land, you doubted me. After that, you disobeyed me. Disobedience after disobedience, but I have been good to you all this time. And there's a reason why you need to praise me. And God reminds them of that. And sometimes, minsan po sa sitwasyon natin, malungkot ka ano, it only, kailangan lang tayo ng remembrance. Kailangan lang natin alalahanin anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. In verse 17, it's all, and all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made boots and sat under the boots for since the day of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. Great gladness simply because this is something very new sa kanila. Now they realize what they have been missing all this time. For before this time, they think that they're in a good place. They're in Babylon. They're in a place where you enjoy all the pleasures of this world. Maybe not as much as, the, uh, as other nations are enjoying it, but they were contented in the way they're living. But now that the Lord has given them a taste of the blessing that comes from the Lord, the joy that can only come from obeying the Word of God, there's great joy and gladness in their hearts. And this is completely different from the joy and gladness that they have been experiencing in their life. Kasi po, iba po ang kasiyahan pag nalaman mo na susunod mo ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Iba rin yung kasiyahan na nakukuha natin from the temporal things of this life. You're, you're, you're doing what you love. You're happy. You're, I'm playing basketball. I'm happy. I'm playing all these things. Uh, the things that I like in my life. I'm happy. But there's nothing compared to the joy of knowing that you know the will of God and you're obeying the will of God. And this is the joy that they're experiencing right now. For a long time, they have not, or, or for, for most of them, for their, their whole lives, they have not experienced obeying the Word of God. But now that they figured out the Word of God, they have obeyed the Word of God, there was joy in their hearts. Meron pong kasiyahan. And, isa po sa at, and this is something that we have to revive in our lives as well. The joy that we get from finding out the will of God and obeying the will of God. Minsan po sa atin, there's preaching and we find something out para bang wala lang, normal lang. But there should be joy in being able to understand the word of God. Should be joy in being able to obey the will of God. Why? Because now they're experiencing the promises of God in their lives. This joy and these things that uh, they are now going to experience sa ating, sa kanila. And when we, when, when we obey the Word of God, there's a blessing in that. Now, just being able to obey the will of God is already a blessing. Marami pong tao sa mundo, they don't even know the will of God because they're, they're not saved. And they don't know that there is a will of God in their lives. But then they, they're not enjoying this blessing. That's why we have to focus on that. Now, yes, the Bible is... Given, has given us many uh, promises. But being believers, or, or, or as, I, as I may say, by the grace of God, being believers that know the Word of God, we realize that God's blessings are always dependent on our obedience to Him. God's blessings are always dependent on our obedience to Him. And that's the reason why they're being blessed now. Why? Because they're obeying the Word of God. Kasi po sa, sa, in, our, in our time today, it's only positive, only Christianity. They focus on the promises, but not on the things that they have to do in order to obtain that promise. Right? They focus on the goodness of God, and God is good. But there's also another side that God is just, and God is something that, that, that requires obedience. And if we are to be blessed by God, we have to obey the Word of God. We have to obey the will of God. And there's no joy in Christianity apart from being in the will of God. There are many things that we claim sa ating promise sa buhay natin, but those sometimes yung mga bagay na yun hindi para sa atin. Why? Let's, let's, go, let's look at some examples. Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. That's God's promise. To them who are called according to His purpose. But there is always a premise that all things work together for good. That's, you cannot just claim that. You cannot just claim the positivity in that unless you are called by God, you're saved. Or that you love God as well. And we know what it requires for us, for God to count what uh, our, our affection to Him as love. To love God with all our being. And unless we do that, we cannot claim that all things work together for good. And sometimes the things that happen in your life are not part of this working together for good. It is God ch uh, chastening you. It's the chastisement of God. Why? Because you don't really love God. And you can only claim this if you are saved and you love God. James 1, 5-8, the Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, 
let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him that is the promise of God but don't stop in that verse there's obedience in, uh, uh, na nakalakip dyan verse 6 says but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed now we claim the promise Lord you said if I ask wisdom you're gonna give me wisdom yes but God said don't doubt when you ask me if you ask me and you doubt this promise is not for you if you ask me not in faith this promise is not for you back at verse 7 says for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord very negative if you're not asking in faith don't even think that I'm gonna answer your prayer there's no way I'm going to answer your prayer. You have to ask in faith. Why? Verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We focus on the promise a lot, but then these promises are on the premise of our obedience to the Lord. And until and unless we learn to obey, we should not claim these promises of the Word of God. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it's true that God is a forgiving God and He has forgiven us provided that we confess our sins. We confess. And, and, and when we say confess, there are a lot of things na nakalakip dyan. True repentance. Hindi lang basta pinagpray mo, sinabi mo, pinatawad ka ng Panginoon. No. You have to truly repent. And, uh, and, and, and it's true that yesterday we learned that God has forgiven us of all our sins. But then, this talks about our relationship with God. That if we have not confessed to Him our sins, our relationship with Him is not okay. It's affected. That we have to confess them. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gives everlasting life freely, provided that you have repented and placed your faith in Him. There are so many promises of God that we have to, that we can only claim if we are obeying Him. Psalms 37, 4 and 5, Delight thyself also, also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. You see, all the promises there are always in the condition of our obedience to God. And today's positive only Christianity, hindi po yan preach. It's only God will give you the desires of your heart. God will bring it to pass. But nothing about what you have to do in order to claim that. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. It is not a given na Christiano ka, you're a believer. Uh, you and your wife are believers that you're going to raise up godly children. That is not a given. It should only be, God will only bless you with godly children provided you, you train them in the way that they should go. That you train them biblically. Then God will give you godly children. Then God will help you raise this, uh, these kids to be godly people. And, and our obedience, and that's what, what, uh, what I want to emphasize today, God's blessings in us or for our lives are always dependent on our obedience to Him. Okay? As men or, or just people of this church or, or members of this church, we have to find out the will of God. And God is not unjust not to give us ways to find out. God has given us the Bible. We can pray. God will give us the will of God. His will in our lives. And then we should be humble enough to obey it. Only then will we claim the blessings of the Lord. Only then can we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Only then can we realize that God really is good. And no matter, uh, uh, He really is good. But then, iba yung alam natin na, mabay, na good ang Panginoon, iba yung na-realize talaga natin ng goodness niya sa buhay natin. And only then can we realize that God really is a God of blessing if, if, we obey Him. And, and, and for most of us, or for a lot of us, that is a very hard thing to do. Because we already know the, the will of God. But then, this battle in our hearts, nahihirapan pa rin tayong sundin yun. Why? Because meron pa tayong selfish desires. Meron pa tayong gusto para sa ating sarili. Meron pa tayong gustong gawin na hindi naman sa salta ng pang, na according to the will of God. But we feel like, we think like it's the right thing to do. But then there's no blessing in that. And until and unless we settle in ourselves that God knows best and we have to obey the word of God, we will not be able to realize these blessings in our lives. So this morning, my challenge is to keep in, and actually the whole chapter here to keep knowing the will of God and, and, and a challenge a new challenge this morning is to remember always where God brought us from God's goodness in our lives and think where should where we are now 
apart from the grace of God in our lives and also to keep on obeying the Word of God. And, and, and I hope that this chapter has been a blessing to us and that our love for the Word of God has been renewed and revived as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank